What's up, Slick Dealers? Today I'm gonna to reveal a restaurant secret that has you hooked paying way more money than you should on something that cost them pennies. I've been thinking a lot about soda lately, mainly because I decided to go on a diet and I want what I can't have. Restaurants employ a lot of tactics to keep us hungry for more, from millions pumped into marketing to offering killer deals that can't actually work out financially for the restaurants, like Wendy's 4 for 4. Burger King's $1.50 10 piece nuggets. No, not you. Or McDonald's Free Fry Friday. The best day to McDonald's is Friday. Get yourself a whole combo for only $3. Your heart may not thank you, but your wallet will. But one thing I'm always conscious about at a restaurant is how much those fountain drinks cost. Sure, everybody can expect to pay $2 to $4 for a soda at a table restaurant, but lately, I'm talking the last five to 10 years, fast food prices have been raising their costs as well. I know costs probably vary from area to area, but when I looked at different places for sodas around me, I was shocked. $2.59 at Burger King and Subway, $2.89 at Chipotle, and $3.29 for a large at Shake Shack. Sheesh! And the one shining light in all of this, trusty McDonald's dunking on all these fools with $1 sodas. For large, how can McDonald's do this when the others can't or won't? Like I said earlier, I've been thinking a lot about soda and about how much we pay for drinks at restaurants in general, starting with the cheap end at $1 for a large soda at McDonald's. To, God forbid you get a soda at a nice table service place like Denny's or Cheesecake Factory, where you're gonna be shelling out what, like $4? When is the last time you went to a restaurant? Has it been that long? COVID. Maybe I'm just an overthinker, but these kinds of drastic differences in cost for the exact same product always make me question just how much I should be paying for something. Because you know, it's not like you can argue a single cheeseburger at Wendy's is exactly the same as a single cheeseburger at Burger King. They taste different. They have different toppings on them. It's a different experience. But soda is soda is soda. It's the same companies and the Coke you get at Chipotle should be the same kind of Coke that you get at McDonald's, which is kind of an interesting point. So many restaurants throughout the country, but we clearly have more of a focus on food than we do beverages here. Aside from coffee, when's the last time you went to a place for their in-house drinks? I know they exist, so tell me in the comments. I actually wanna know this. Where was I? Soda, soda, soda. The problem is how much a soda actually costs to produce. Asking Google this question yields some 2017 results saying a soda only costs a restaurant about 20 cents in total. That includes all materials, the drink itself, the cup, the lid, the straw, even that claw arm they used to hand it to you. Is that only here? Is, do they only do that in LA? Sure, this doesn't factor in the cost of labor and that was back in 2017, so let's say it's a quarter now to adjust for inflation but you should still expect consistency with the competitors on the exact same product, which is why it amazes me that McDonald's held fast to the $1 sodas when seemingly all its competitors have abandoned that ploy. Here's where I'd like to talk a little bit about subsidizing. If you aren't familiar, subsidies are ways that a business lower costs on certain items, often as a marketing gimmick to get people in the door. The business may be breaking even or even losing money on that product, but they offer it at a low, low cost anyways, hoping you'll buy something else to offset that loss. Costco, for instance, knows there is no way in heck they can actually be making money on that $1.50 hot dog soda combo. Sometimes subsidies threaten or kill restaurants. For instance, Subway did away with its long-lived $5 footlong special after realizing they couldn't keep it up with inflation especially in places with higher minimum wages. In 2018, a Little Caesars franchisee had to shut down locations in Kansas City because they couldn't afford to pay workers and keep the $5 hot and ready deal. Some would argue this is an example of bad subsidizing. If the only thing people are buying at your store is the thing that makes you lose money, you're gonna lose money. So, is McDonald's losing money on their soda? No. And it's not just because they have the lowest soda prices in all the land. Even for a dollar large soda, McDonald's is not subsidizing. They are still making money, in theory, on those drinks. Because like I said earlier, the cost of all materials for a soda should only be about a quarter dog on. This is the point. Fountain sodas at restaurants are an easy moneymaker because they know people will pay the cost without even thinking about it. 
When is the last time you remember looking at the price of a soda at any restaurant? Because every time I do that when I'm out with my friends, they think I'm crazy. I do it anyways because I know it would make me sick to pay $4 for one soft drink that I know only costs the restaurant 25 cents to produce. The markup here is insane. They say in business training seminars that you should aim for a 100% markup on your items for sale. $4 for a soda is like 1700%. Even the places I mentioned earlier, selling soda at 250 a pop are getting back 10 times what it costs them per drink. There are other ways you're losing out if you get a drink, especially now that most people have been doing takeout. So here are four things to keep in mind when you're getting a soda at a restaurant, just to be more wary of what you're paying. First, start by actually looking at the price of a soda at the restaurant. I know this is not normal, but just check and ask yourself if the craving for that unhealthy soda is really worth what they're charging you. You could save yourself a lot of money on a drink you don't really need by opting for a free water instead. Second, is the drink included in the cost of a combo? If not, maybe skip it. Third, do you get refills? Most places in the US offer this if you're dining in, but if you're at a table service restaurant and you have a large party or a distracted server, there's a good chance you won't get those refills, so maybe skip the soda and get a water. Finally, ice. I thought I'd do a little demonstration here because I was curious, how much less soda am I getting when my cup is filled with ice? So I've assembled some items here for our very not scientific test. This is 32 ounces of soda. This is a 32 ounce cup and this is ice. So with that 25 cents price point, they estimated that I think about 12 cents of that was the actual cost of the soda. Okay, I've put enough ice to fill it about two thirds of the way and let's see how much soda this thing takes. Try to get it as full as I possibly can. That is a full drink, which I don't even get most of the time that I go, like that's a lot more full than I normally get it. We've got a measuring cup right here. How many ounces do we still have? I filled up the cup with ice about two thirds of the way. And then when I poured in the soda, I still had nine ounces worth of soda left in this jar. That means to me, when I get ice, I can expect only to get about two thirds of the drink that I would normally get if I didn't ask for ice at all. But then I'm getting a warm drink. So, you know, pick your battles. Also, I realized a second ago that my tag's been sticking out of my hat the whole time. So feel free to light me up in the comments over that. So what do you think? Does buying a fountain soda at a restaurant look like a big fat waste of money to you? Like this video if you learned something today. And please subscribe to our channel for more ways to shop smart and save money. I'm Pete King, and if you paid $4 for a soda, you weren't really trying. Is that good?